it is 62 degrees in my grow area before the onset of the bomb cyclone. Two days later, it's sunny and it is almost 75 degrees in my grow area. And it is the 24th of December. So Christmas Eve for those who are in the US. I guess it's Christmas Eve everywhere, but not everyone celebrates. And I haven't watered in here uh, since my last video. You can see the snow melting in the sun and falling. It was uh, minus 10 in Chicago yesterday and super windy. Uh, there's no video of that. But I am going to try to water today while it's sunny. And I will do a quick update on how things are growing. Uh, things are definitely dry despite the humidifier because it's been too cold to water. And last night, I came in here and looked and it was only 50 degrees in my grow space and I actually turned up the thermostat. But I think it was doing pretty good since it was minus 10 outside. I wanted to emphasize again that I don't water my orchids when it's cold and that's because it's easier for them to get rot when it's cold. If, you're, if they're wet. And this is the same reason that it's not recommended that you water orchids at night because it's cooler at night. And when water sits on the surface of the leaves, then it's easier for fungal spores to make it through the plant cell wall. So uh, that's what those black spots are that often appear on the leaves of orchids. They're damp at night and that spotting is um, what well, cellular death caused by uh, a bacteria or fungal fungus making it into the cell. And so um, the, the spots themselves are not necessarily the fungus, you can't see it, but the spots are the dead areas that um, are caused by the, fun the fungus making it into the plant. And uh, plants have, like orchids, have a range that they grow well in. I grow mostly Cattleyas, and they prefer it to be above 60 degrees. And um, the bifoliates really want it to be like 95 degrees. And so when uh, I came in here uh, last night and I checked the temperature, and it was only about 50 degrees in here. I turned up my thermostat to try to keep it warmer because even uh, though I hadn't been watering, um, if there are any fungal spores in the area, it's going to be easier for them to make their way into my orchids and cause rot. Uh, I don't sterilize uh, my grow area, therefore it's really hard to get rid of all fungi in the world. And so there could just be spores floating around. Um, I don't treat my collection with an antifungal right now. Uh, I probably should. I'm still trying to pick uh, a good antifungal to use as a regular treatment. Uh, 
most of my orchids that go outside and that I've had for a while, generally uh, they must have thicker cell walls or uh, some other uh, plant mechanism to fight off fungus. They don't seem to get rot that much, but seedlings, new seedlings, especially seedlings that I get from Sunset Valley orchids, uh, seem very prone to rot. It's really easy for them to rot when they're young. I think this is because uh, Fred Clark has a greenhouse and they're all inside. They're very protected. It's just a, um, it's a really um, good environment, but it's a very protected environment. They're not exposed to a lot of pathogens and they come to my house and I uh, have lots of pathogens. Uh, because I'm just, you know, I'm exposed to the outside. They go outside half the year and they come in. And so even though um, they, they, uh, they come really healthy, um, I don't think that they, uh, they get exposed here and then it's just really easy because maybe their cell, like again, their cell walls aren't as thick. Uh, they're, um, they're just more delicate right? They're hothouse flowers. Ha ha ha. So uh, it's just easier for them to get uh, rot and die. And so I'm trying very hard uh, to keep the temperature up in my grow area. Uh, I don't have like a digital thermometer in here to uh, check temperature. I have a thermostat um, an old-fashioned thermostat that's on the wall. It's a dial and I turn it um, to the temperature that I want. Of course, that doesn't mean that's the actual temperature in my grow area. Uh, my grow area temperature, um, I check with um, an old-fashioned analog uh, thermometer and uh, when I saw that it was 50 degrees, I turned up the thermostat. Uh, so I constantly check my area or I try to check my area and it was doing pretty well because it uh, was like uh, minus 10 yesterday and even now it's only 10 degrees outside and it is uh, almost 75 in here so um, obviously the sun really really helps but uh, the my heating system is doing really well I use baseboard heaters to heat my uh, grow area. They're located underneath my windows and I've they were installed when I had my sunroom built and they work pretty well. But of course, uh, it being Chicago, I try not to have them up too high in the winter because uh, electricity is expensive. Here's a few blooming orchids to finish out this video. This is Catalea brabantiae crossed to Catalea amethystoglossa. And I got this, I believe, from the Maui Orchid Whisperer during their live stream blog. And um, I got this because it's pink and it's covered in spots. This Oncidium cheriforum that I got from Hauserman's at the Illinois Orchid Society Christmas party is now opening up. I have two Epicatlea volcano tricks in bloom right now. This one right here is Volcano Queen. And this beautiful one right here is Volcano Trick Fireball with two spikes. And you can really see the influence of Stanford Annum here in the long, long inflorescence and the huge cluster of flowers at the end. This cute little pink Catlea is uh, Donna Pisanin crossed to um, Tropical Star. So gotta lean forward to read the tag. And it it's been bloomed for a while. It usually blooms um, two to three flowers per inflorescence. And uh, this is a pretty big plant now, so it does bloom a lot.
This right here is Sophrolita Catlea Angel Eyes Cross to Potinar Virginia Dickey. And I think, horror of horrors, there may be a, we can't really see it. Um, there may, it's, there may be a bug on this. I did discover that all my orchids that were sitting right here had some kind of tiny little bugs on it. And so I ended up cutting off the inflorescence on this Oncidium. This was a Colmenara Wildcat. And then um, washing this one, um, I think aphids. I think it might be aphids. Not sure. Uh, let's, with my finger, see. Oh, it doesn't feel like an aphid. I just squished it. But um, probably I should treat this with uh, insecticidal soap again. Here's Catalea Romania woolly. Fortunately, it has some on the ground. And its leaves have been quite eaten by Pinto, who has come to join me. Are you here? Hello, Pinto. You're a pain in the butt. As it's December 24th, the days are really short. We just had the solstice two days ago. And so this is gonna be the last blooming orchid that I show because the sun is setting already. And this is, I believe, um, one of my King Yanum hybrids. Let's try to get a picture of the flower upside down right there. So the sun is already setting. And I'm just gonna do a close-up of this Dendrobium kingianum, and that'll be it for this video.